Hi guys, I'm Erika and in this video, I'm going to tell about what are we going to write in the chapter 1 in our thesis. So, without any further ado, let's just begin. So, um, this is how the cover of a thesis probably gonna look like, although it may not be perfect, but uh, yeah, this is how it's probably gonna look like. By the way, in this thesis, I'm going to do research about figurative language in Rainier's novel Ketua Kelas versus Perusuh Kelas. Just for your information, this novel is actually the writer's very very first novel she ever written. And this novel is publi was published in 2019 let me first tell you about this this table of contents shows us that there are chapter 1 chapter 2 and so on and so on and so on in our thesis so we are not gonna have one chapter in one thesis but we have more than one chapters in a thesis but let me just tell you about what are we going to write in the chapter one so as we can see chapter one is the introduction and there are usually five points in the chapter one they are the background of the study, the problem of the study, the objective of the study, the scope of the study, the significances of the study. These five points are what we are going to talk in this video. The background of the study provides context to the information that you are discussing in your paper. Thus, the background of the study generates the reader's interest in your research questions and helps them understand why your study is important. Typically, the background of the study includes a review of the existing literature on the area you are researching leading up to your topic once you have discussed the contribution of other research researchers in the field you can identify gaps in understanding that is areas that have not been addressed in these studies. You can then explain how your study will address these gaps and how it will contribute to the existing knowledge in the field. The problem of the study. A research problem is a specific issue, difficulty, contradiction, or gap in knowledge that you will aim to address in your research. You might look for practical problems aimed at contributing to change or theoretical problems aimed at expanding knowledge. Bear in mind that some research will do both of these things. But usually, the research problem focuses on one or the other. The type of research problem you choose depends on your broad topic of interest and the type of research you want to do. 
A research problem is a question that a researcher wants to answer or a problem that a researcher wants to solve. Like in this thesis, there are two questions in there. First is what types of figurative language are found in Rainier's novel Ketua Kelas versus Perusu Kelas? And the second one is what are the meanings of figurative language used in Rainier's novel Ketua Kelas versus Perusu Kelas? Your topic is interesting and you have lots to say about it. But this isn't a strong enough basis for academic research. Without a well-defined research problem, you are likely to end up with an unfocused and unmanageable project. You might end up repeating what other people have already said, trying to say too much, or doing research without a, without a clear purpose and justification. You need a problem in order to do research that contributes new and relevant insights. Whether you are planning your thesis, starting a research paper, or writing a research proposal, the research problem is the first step towards knowing exactly what you'll do and why. The objective of the study. In this thesis, the objective of the study is to describe the types of figurative language found in Rainier's novel Ketua Kelas versus Perusu Kelas and to analyze the meaning of figurative language found in Rainier's novel Ketua Kelas versus Perusu Kelas. So what's actually objective of the study is? Research objectives describe concisely what the research is trying to achieve. They summarize the accomplishment a researcher wishes to achieve through the project and provides direction to the study. A research objective must be achievable. It must be framed keeping in mind the available time infrastructure required for research, and other resources. Before forming a research objective, you should read about all the developments in your area of research and find gaps in knowledge that need to be addressed. This will help you come up with suitable objectives for your research project. The scope of the study explains the extent to which the research area will be explored in the work and specifies the parameters within the study will be operating. Basically, this means that you will have to define what the study is going to cover and what, is, and what it is focusing on. Similarly, you also have to define what the study is not going to cover. This will come under the limitations. Generally, the scope of a research paper is followed by its limitations. As a researcher, you have to be very careful when you define your scope of area of focus. Remember that if you broaden the scope too much, you might not be able to do justice to the work or it might take a very long time to complete. Consider the visibility of your work before you write down the scope. Again, if the scope is too narrow, the findings might not be generalized. Typically, the information that you need to include the scope will cover the following. First, the general purpose of the study. 
the population or sample that you are studying, the duration of the study, the topics or theories that you will discuss, and the geographical location covered in the study. The significances of the study. So this is the last point in chapter 1 in a thesis. What are we going to write in the significances of the study? The significances of the study is written statement that explain why your research was needed. It is a justification of the importance of your work and impact it has on your research field, its contributions to new knowledge and how others will benefit from it. The significance of the study, also known as the rationale of the study, is important to convey to the reader why the research work was important. This may be an academic reviewer assessing your manuscript under peer review. An examiner reading your thesis, a funder reading your grant application, or another research group reading your published journal paper. Your academic writing should make clear to the reader that the significance of the research that you performed was the, contribu the contribution you made and benefits of it. I hope by watching this video, it helps you to understand more about Chapter 1 Introduction in a Thesis. And once again, thank you for watching guys.